Alright, here is the uh, Auzi, I don't know how you pronounce that. AUZAI portable monitor. 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 15.6 inches. Should be a 1080p. Yeah. Nice packaging. There's cushion inside here. There's a screen protector that I don't see me using. Nice little instruction booklet. Oh, it kind of sticks out in the bottom. There is an odor. Ooh, a strong odor. But there's quality packaging, let me tell you. Ooh, look at that. Here, little silver into the uh, USB C to USB C cord, C to A cord, and a mini HDMI to full size HDMI. Let's take a look at my actual device. Well, this packaging smells horrendous. Alright, so I'm going to tell you right off the bat without even using this yet. Uh, the packaging and materials is substantially nicer than the lapel monitor. I previously and still do have this lapel 15.6 inch monitor, uh, which just happened to break yesterday or today, who knows when. Uh, this company hit me up on Twitter and offered to send it over free for me to check it out. Uh, I wasn't planning on breaking my lapel, so I'm glad they sent it over. But this packaging is a lot nicer than the lapel. Here's the prime example. So you see this kind of rubbery outside case. So this was the outside case for the lapel. And it has like this soft texture that I don't like. I like this much better. And the lapel, I paid my own money for it. But this is a very nice little case. It kind of double wraps around. Oh yeah. I like this a lot. So you can see how it compares to the little pal. It's like the bezels are much smaller on the sides, at least the physical portion. And the bottom is larger, but it makes up for it with the smaller side bezels. And it's still about the same height. I don't understand how that works. Back of the panel was all silver, of course. Back of this one is all black. It just looks nicer, right? So. You can see this little hump that makes the overall product thinner, I guess, or at least the screen portion will be thinner. This is the, uh, how you pronounce that. And this you can see how thick uh, the lapel is. So the lapel is relatively heavy. This one, I don't know if it's heavy or not, but it's... There's some little rubber feet at the bottom. And on this side, you have a little button and a little switcher. And I assume a headphone jack. Yeah, so that's probably your settings and that's your actual power button. Very similar to the lapel. It had a USB-C port, a power button, and a little toggle switch. On this side, we have an HDM mini HDMI, power USB, or I guess a USB C, and then the power USB C. Similar to how the Paladin with HDMI, USB, and the headphone jack on this side. So, same ports, they just kind of rearranged some. I might kind of like how the lapel does it better because of how uh, 
it might get confusing having both the USB-C ports on the same side. I also have this Zeus Zen screen, which I have a video on. I have a video on the pound too, of course. Uh, obviously, the back of the Zeus is nicer. It's a little thick too, and it has these two buttons and just one port. It's USB-C only. So this is a nice monitor. I've had it for almost three years. Uh, I'm a traveling businessman and it's held up very strongly. And I've taken this on a lot of trips, but it only does USB-C. So uh, I can't plug my Nintendo Switch into it. I can't, you know, anything HDMI you can't do. Or even uh, Samsung DeX I can't do because it's only USB-C. Samsung DeX will work over USB-C, but the monitor needs to get power as well. So with the lapel, I was able to use the C for you for DEX and then the C for power. I'll check it out and see if I can use the HDMI port on the AZUI. So good, like I said, the lapel. I've only had it for six months. I paid for it myself, and today when I turned it on, it wasn't working. It looks like it's broken. I mean, there's nothing that feels broken here, but it looks like it's shattered in this area when it lights up. I don't recall doing anything to damage it. However, I was reorganizing this area, and it might have got bumped, unbeknownst to me. All right, let's see how this guy works. So these things are usually kind of a pain. Like when I'm home and not traveling, I got these little bookshelf kits. All right, so it's a little, has a little ledge. It's meant to hold a book. But it works perfect to hold your monitor. I really like the back material a lot better than the lapel. And it feels lighter. I don't know that it is. Maybe it's just my a placebo effect, but it definitely feels lighter to me. Uh, so these covers. Oh, I see. You know, it's like when you want to close it, these little cases are meant to be a protective sheath like when you pack it in your backpack and then it can also be folded up to be a stand so with this one i believe you would lay it face down and this little three-fourths guy fits in right there and then this would come over to kind of button it up and that's like a little book you can put that in your backpack with your laptop and then when you travel or you go to a friend's house whatever you know you can have a dual monitor set up uh, as I said, I'm a traveling businessman when we're not in the global pandemic, and I use these screens in hotels all the time. They're a game changer for me. And I also use them at home. Uh, for example, in my house, uh, like, well, my Nintendo Switch is usually downstairs, and my Xbox and PlayStation 4 are upstairs. My son only has a Switch, and so my son and I want to play games together. We can obviously hook games up and play through there and add our, you know, with headphones on, but it's, it's more fun to be in the same room with someone, right? So, thanks to those little monitors, I can have a little gaming setup on your lap or like a little shelf, a little stand put up in my living room. So, like, I can play on the Xbox, my son can play on his Switch, the same game, and we can play together. Uh, these cords, I will say, this looks like the exact same cord that came with the lapel. You can see it's still plugged in there. Uh, so I would prefer it to be a full-size HDMI instead of the mini HDMI. And uh, this cord, I don't know if it's the same, but the cord that came to the lapel was not very good. It wouldn't work. So I would, I bought a bunch of these little, like a three-pack of these little regular HDMI to mini HDMIs. So I have this one in my backpack and I have one in my case. Oh yeah, that's what I'll show you. So this does not have a battery. It's just a screen. Until you plug it in, it does nothing, right? So, you could check this in a suitcase, because there's no battery. You could put it in your backpack too, but I put it in my suitcase, and I got this Tom Tuck. It has this little pouch where I can just throw all my cords in, and then you can take this, put it inside this little pouch, and then I pack that with my clothes, and it's all good. It's a, you know, a little Tom Tuck bring. I've taken this on multiple trips and no damage here. Not too many cords in there now, but you can see it's substantial padding. This is a good little case. All right, let me uh, switch the desk around and I'll plug this monitor in and we'll see how it works. And I'll show you a couple of use cases I use it for. All right, here is my Lenovo, <laughs> Lenovo, Lenovo Yoga Chromebook C630. And here is the uh, AZUI, whatever. 
So I did even look at the instructions. Let me see if I can just figure out how to flip this guy up. I'm going to assume something like this. All right, I'm going to need to look at the instructions. Well, so that's a bummer. Uh, this whole manual does not say anything about how to make the little mount work. So there's rubber feet here. So I don't know, maybe it's supposed to sit up like this. So it does have rubber feet on the bottom here that kind of helps it stand up. So I don't know. So there is a mini HDMI port. There's also a C to C port cord. Lenovo only has USB-C and USB-A. It does not have HDMI. So let's just try just USB-C. Oh, that's kind of a bummer too because I normally plug things into this side. But you can only plug them in on that side. Yeah, so normally I always have things to the right hand side. But I guess here I'll have to use the left. And let's see which port's which. So the middle port should be the one that does the business. Let's just see if it actually comes on. And it does. There you go. And uh, let's see if we can adjust the settings here. Oh, well, I that's going to come into frame here. So, way better to read this than you can with uh, the lapel, or the way the lapel used to work anyhow. Same little doohickey though. This is your settings. You can move it up and down and push it in to select. So I'm going to select brightness and crank that bad boy up because it was pretty dark. All right, and it says there, maximum resolution, 1920 by 1080 p at 60 hertz. So... This could be a pretty stellar little game. I think it's pretty fucking bright. And this is a 4K screen. And I have the light uh, here for my video. So, But I, that's a good looking screen, I gotta say. So the lapel, like I said, is broken. Yeah, I think that is how it's supposed to go up. Because you can see that magnet's on there pretty good. So I bet that is probably how. I don't know. Maybe you're supposed to set this up somehow. But, like, there's literally no direction, so. Unless I missed them, I don't see any directions here. But, I mean, in theory, this holds it pretty, it's pretty sturdy. The case for the lapel was equally shitty, right? You just had to fold it as well. And, like, there was some pretty good magnets in there, but it never felt... I mean, it never fell over, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that's how I did the lapel. Something. Something like that. But it was never super great. I should have shown this earlier. This is the the one from Asus. And it was a very nice case. So it has even Asus and screen written in there. Or Asus collection written in there. Asus. And, of course... But again, this is a lot more expensive. I think I paid like two fifty for this one, and it had a pretty good thing as well. You can see little notches here. So basically, you mounted the the monitor, magneted it onto here, and then you would. It showed you where the feet would go. So like, uh, it had like a one and two setting there, for you to set the monitor up on, which I thought was pretty good. So here's the lapel. So you can see, it's just fucked. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to toss this thing, I guess. But you can see how cool this wood thing is. Hey, you can see. I don't like how it defaults to that dim color, though. What's the volume? If you just hit up and down, it's the volumes. Your speakers built into this. So this video speakers are coming out here. So you're definitely not gonna 
winning awards for audio quality here, but it's something. And you plug your headphones in. I don't know where the microphone is for this camera. But trust me, there's audio coming out of here. So the headphones work. It works playing music from that second source there. All right, uh, let's get a glimpse of the settings. So you push this guy in. So you can see that there. Let me try to get closer. Uh, in here we have brightness, contrast, echo, eco, I guess. Oh, then you have a game mode, movie mode, a photo mode, or standard mode. DCR, I don't know what that is. Sharpness. And then... I don't know how to go back. Hit this button. Yeah, there's a button up here. You hit this button, it goes back. Color settings. Color temp. So 65,000K or 93,000K. I don't know what the... Nine, yeah, I don't know. 9300K or 6500K. I don't know what the difference is there. I kind of like 9300 better, but I'm going to leave it default. Hue, 50%. Saturation, 50%. Six color. Oh, wow, that's a lot of options. I don't know what any of that shit means. Color gamut, native. Oh, DCI-P3, Adobe RDB, sRGB. Oh, looks pretty good, too. Oh, also, this is uh, the night mode's probably on here, right? Yeah, night light's on. Let me turn that off. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So I had the night light off because it was on from my Chromebook. All right, and then let's go back to audio settings. Uh, you can just mute it or set your volume. Other settings, aspect is full or 16 by nine. Uh, I don't know what's the difference there necessarily. I hate how it does that though. Brightness like default, maybe it's because there's no battery. Let's try that. Now, so this is just an anchor battery pack I use for a switch. Let's see if I plug a battery in, if that makes a difference. So I don't know if you saw this little white thing that came up here. It's saying low power to connected. So it is charging, and it says it right there too. So, uh, right here too, it says it, right? So it is charging my Chromebook through this battery charger through the monitor. So let me plug power into the Chromebook. Now, let's see, it's a default 30% uh, brightness. Well, there's a hundred percent, so I mean, it's pretty bright. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good brightness there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go down other settings aspect full, free sync off, language off, HDR is on there too, and then a reset input source type C or HDMI. I wish there was a way to set the brightness to stay. So 6.2 says brightness and all right. So when not in the menu or something, you're pushing the volume up for once for quick access to the brightness setting or press the down. Okay. So I'm not in the settings. You push up, it should go to brightness and down to go to volume. So if I hit down, it should be volume, which is what we see here. And right, so we'll back out of that. And if I go up, it should be brightness. Yeah, so brightness is there. So that's not terrible, I guess. I have hit that every time. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, I, mean, I wish I would. De I wish it would default to a brighter color. But other than that, it's pretty solid. All right, so now we're just gonna show it with HDMI. So this is a uh, C on this side, the HDMI on this side. So I'm gonna unplug the C from the Chromebook, which takes this thing off, and then I'm gonna plug. into the Chromebook and this is the HDMI mail side of that. Plug it into my little HDMI to mini adapter. 
and then we're going to plug HDMI into here. All right, so that works with the HDMI. So over here, you can see we have uh, HDMI and the USB-C power from the Anchor. You can plug that into a wall adapter, just in my current setup, it's easier for me to use the battery pack. And when I travel, a lot of times I do use the battery pack for these things. Now with the HDMI, of course, if you take the power away, it's not going to work. But of course, if you put the power back in, no, let's just see. So the power is on the bottom. It still works. All right. So yeah, it doesn't matter which one you plug in with the power there. You can plug this C for the power into either one. It works just fine. And it looks like with HDMI, it stays that level of brightness. So that's interesting. So maybe if you use the HDMI port, the brightness does stay the same. Well, not positive. All right. So that's enough with the Chromebook. Let's try some other action here. All right. So what I have now is power going from the anchor battery pack to the AUZI. This is the C to HDMI dongle. This is my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So let's plug that in and see if we get DEX working. And we do. This is not a touch screen. So you need a mouse for it to actually work. So this is just the mouse I have connected to my Samsung. Okay. And there we go. So now we've got Samsung DEX working. I can see my messages. Wallpapers from DEX. All right, that makes it a little easier to see. There's my reminder app. There's my YouTube Studio app. So this is all the stuff from my phone, right? So here's the videos we were just looking at. Uh, let's see what the brightness is. Let's push it up. You're still at 95. I can see, you know, all my deck stuff from my phone. So a lot of times when I travel, my work device is a MacBook. I'm not a fan of MacBooks. And I'm not a fan of doing my personal stuff. You know, just dumb shit. Even just surfing there, whatever. I try to keep my work device for my work and my stuff on my personal items. But in a hotel room, a lot of times, you don't want to be stuck with just using a phone. So having a screen like this for Dex is fantastic. This was a perfect setup. So I was using a little pal. Uh, that one broke, and I think this was actually much nicer anyhow. Uh, even if they weren't given to me for free. I mean, I probably wouldn't have tried if they had given to me free. But the lapel I saw recommended by ATA Prime. And I've had a lot of problems with it. Dex doesn't work very well with it. It's just, it was kind of a pain in the ass, really. It was not a good purchase. Whereas this, I think, is... Well, again, it's my first day trying the thing out, but it seems pretty good so far. The settings menu looks a lot nicer. The case, the little foldable case for it looks a lot, is nicer. Uh, I like the thinner side bezels. I don't give a shit about a large bottom middle, so that doesn't bother me at all. I actually kind of like it because it puts the screen up a little higher for your eyes to naturally look at. I guess we're on here, so let's take a look. Uh, let's see, let's go to YouTube, I guess. And we'll go to my channel. Alright, so let's watch a Fortnite video. I will go ahead and turn the volume up. Oh, what this say? If you ask me, go ahead and ask me. I'll tell you if it's perfect. Alright, so now what we're gonna do Alright, well item. say the volume is for Dex is not coming out there, but I would never use this anyhow. I would always use headphones. Certainly in a hotel I'd always use Bluetooth. But let's get some there's some gameplay in here, so let's get it. Alright, let me turn the volume down just so it's not so distracting. We got the settings. Quality is at 720. I'm gonna put it up to 1080p. And we're gonna change these settings to game mode. And we'll see if that makes any different. So game mode is dark as shit. Movie mode. Photo mode's really dark. Movie game mode. Let's set the game mode. Oh, when you do game mode, you can't change the brightness or anything. So I wouldn't like that. Alright, you can crank the brightness up.
Yeah, so this was recorded on the Nintendo Switch and you know uploaded to YouTube, but you can see it looks pretty good. It's not a 4K screen, or I'm not gonna expect it to beat my Lenovo Yoga with the 4K screen there, of course, but I say it looks pretty solid. So that is using the HDMI cable for so let's unplug the HDMI. Unplug my power cable. I'm just going to use the middle USB-C. So it does work without power in USB-C. So that's pretty good. It is back to being dim. But we can bring it up real quick. Of course, that's really going to drain the battery. Yeah, it cut off. It didn't work. It didn't like that, I guess. Or maybe the cord was just loose. Yeah, if you get too high... I can't handle it without the juice. So let me put the battery pack in. Yeah, so now we can do 100% brightness. Yep, yeah, so that's pretty great right there. All right, uh, one last test. This is my MacBook. Let's go ahead and plug that in here. All right, so it doesn't like it just with the C. If there's not enough juice, I don't know. Well, let me try to plug it in. That was without power going to the MacBook, so let me try to put power to the MacBook and use just the C. Okay, yeah, so if I give power to the MacBook, you can see the cursor going between the two here. So if there is power with the MacBook, and it's brightness again. This is also on the nightlight setting. So it will work C to C as long as there's power to the MacBook and power to the AU Xi. So let's take this out, and let's try HDMI. C to HDMI. All right, so C to HDMI to AUZI will work and let's see if I can take power away here it should not work right because HDMI doesn't provide power all right so now you got that working let me remove power from the MacBook and it still works so if you want to use USB-C from the MacBook to the AUZI you need to have power. If you want to have a MacBook with HDMI, the monitor needs power. Either way, you got a lot of options here, right? It's a 2016 MacBook Pro. All right, so again, it's getting the thumbs up for me. See that right there? That's my thumb. And it's up. So I am liking the AU's, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I like it. I think it looks cool. Screen's pretty good. And yeah, it seems to be working all the ways I need it to. Uh, I'll make a separate video testing with Nintendo Switch, uh, but I think it should work there just fine as well. Thanks for checking me out. Leave me any questions below. Right off the bat, I must say I recommend this over the lapel. I think it's cheaper. I don't know off the top of my head what the price was. I now looked at the lapel today because it broke. And my, I paid like 188 I think, for it. And I think this is 160 I'm not positive. Uh, the Zen screen is way more expensive, but... Uh, I think it's probably a more quality monitor, but again, it's also substantially more expensive and only C. And the HDMI adds a lot of functionality, such as being able to put gaming systems on there like the Nintendo Switch. All right, so thanks for checking me out. Uh, leave me any questions below, and I'll keep an update on this monitor. Like I said, the lapel lasted me. I bought it in November, and it's already dead. And I don't recall doing any damage to it. I'm not saying it's not possible. Uh, I was moving. I was rearranging this whole office area last night, so it's very possible I did do something to it, but I don't recall anything major that would have been like, oh shit, I just broke that thing. So we'll see how well this one holds up. Uh, but I was pretty fond of the pile because it would it traveled in my suitcase all those times just fine, but this one, we'll see how it goes. But I do like the little foldy case with it better, and I do like just the uh, slimmer bezels I like, and... Uh, I like the black instead of the silver. That's just a personal preference. All right, thanks for checking me out. Leave me comments below, and I will answer as many as I can.